One thing that has become quite clear in the Switch generation is that Nintendo has inexplicably decided to slow down on multiple fronts when it comes to developing new games. For quite some time, they were working at a breakneck pace, trying to bolster both the libraries of their main home systems and then additionally their handheld systems. So there's no doubt that was difficult and sometimes expensive to maintain. While I didn't expect when the Switch arrived, consolidating those markets, that they'd continue to develop all of the same projects on the new system, I also didn't expect them to pull back so much. One series lost in the shuffle was Advance Wars. While they have at least finally published a re-release of two of the titles from the series, they've otherwise left the door open to indie developers to try to fill the niche. The most successful to this point, in my mind, has been the Wargroove series, which ran with the ball they were left with, and has done a reasonably good job of making their own colorful version filled with a bit of personality to boot. Empire Shall Fall is actually a pleasant surprise now on the scene as well, sporting a decent variety of units, a fair general art style and some satisfying tactical strategy, though coming up a bit short in the personality department comparatively. Where it definitely loses a step is in the presentation of it all, especially when it comes to what story it has, the lack of voice acting, and in some regards the somewhat odd choice of character art. What seems to work reasonably well enough on the unit level doesn't feel like it translates as well for their depictions and cutscenes. I respect that it's a stylistic choice, but some of the folks still simply look odd. Still. Though many of the unit types and general battles may feel somewhat familiar, I was impressed by how quickly the strategic elements got more demanding without looking to crush you completely. All in all, while it isn't at the same level as Advance Wars, and it also falls short of the likes of Wargroove and its sequel, I still found it to be more competently put together than the majority of the other indies in the space I've encountered. Its challenge level feels appropriately down the middle for the most part, the units you'll be staring at quite a bit as they get moved around and then attack each other look pretty good, and it kept me pretty engaged overall. If you can overlook the lack of much to get excited about beyond just the raw strategic play itself, it should suffice as a decent off-brand fix. Overall, my final score for the game ended up being a 7.9. And if you're interested in picking it up, it's currently available on the Switch eShop for $12.99. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this review. And if you'd like more information or ideas of indie games worth checking out on Switch, be sure to click on the link provided in the description. Until next time.